Hello, this is Stefan Marek from Conductor. So let's start this course by doing a small Kafka introduction. So when you start with your company, it's very simple. You have your source system and you have your target system, and maybe you need to move data between them. For example, your source system is a database and your target system is an analytics system. And so you want to move data from A to B. It's very simple. You just create an integration. But then when your company gets bigger, you're going to have a lot of source systems and a lot of target systems, and integrating them all together is going to be very complicated. You're going to have many more integrations to write, and then each integration is going to come with its own set of challenges. For example, if you have four source systems and six target systems, and you want to all integrate them together, you will need to write 24 integrations. And each integration will have difficulties around the protocol, so choosing how the data will be transported, for example, over TCP, HTTP, REST, FTP, JDBC. The data formats, how is the data parsed? So is it a binary type of data? Is it CSV, JSON, Avro, Protobuf? The data schema and evolution, so how it is shaped and how it may change in the future. And then each source system, every time you integrate it with a target system, because there will be some processes querying some data and getting data out of the source system, the source system will have an increased load from the connections, which may be a problem. So this is not a new problem. This is something very, very old in IT. And Apache Kafka is here to solve it for you. So Apache Kafka allows you to decouple your data streams and systems. So the idea is that the source systems will have the responsibilities to send their data into Apache Kafka. And then any target systems who want to get access to this data feed, this data stream, will have to query and read from Apache Kafka to get the stream of data from these source systems. And so by having this decoupling, we are putting the responsibility of receiving and sending the data all on Apache Kafka. And so this is not a new way of doing things. This is called PubSub. But Apache Kafka is revolutionary because it scales really well and it can really, really handle big amounts of messages per second. So what could be the source systems and the target systems? Well, for example, your source systems could be website events, pricing data, financial transactions, user interaction, and then the target systems may be a databases, analytics system, email system, or audit, these kind of things. So why Apache Kafka? Well, this was a project that originated within LinkedIn, and it was very successful and it was open sourced. And then this open source project found its home under the Apache Software Foundation, uh, ASF, and so this is why Kafka is called Apache Kafka. And so this is an open source project, but there are some private corporations maintaining the project. Uh, some of them may be Confluent, IBM and Cloudera, but many others as well. But main, the main organization supporting the Kafka project is Confluent. Confluent is a private organization, and they have a whole business model around Apache Kafka, bringing their own enterprise software on top of the project. Now, Apache Kafka is very, very good and very, very popular because it is distributed, has a resilient type of architecture, and is fault tolerant. And at the time when LinkedIn created it, it addressed a lot of their problems. It also has some very nice uh, scalability because it is horizontally scalable. That means that to just add capacity, you need to add more servers. And in Apache Kafka, a server is called a broker. So Apache Kafka can scale to hundreds of brokers and can scale to millions, tens of millions of messages per second. And actually Twitter is having hundreds of millions of messages per second. It has very, very high performance with latency of less than 10 milliseconds, which make it a real-time system. It is used by thousands of firms, including 60% of the Fortune 100 firms in the world. And so some of the big names using Apache Kafka that you may know include LinkedIn, Airbnb, Netflix, Uber, and Walmart. So what are some use cases for Apache Kafka? Well, it could be used as a messaging system, activity traffic. It could be used to gather metrics from many different locations. It could be used to gather application logs at scale. And this was the, the metrics and the logs were actually one of the first use cases of Apache Kafka for LinkedIn. It can be used for stream processing, as we'll see with the Kafka Streams API, for example. It can be used to decouple system dependencies in a microservice architectures. And also has a lot of integration with big data technologies such as Spark, Flink, Storm, and Hadoop in order to perform big data. So here are some examples of how Kafka is being used around the world. So Netflix will use Kafka to apply recommendation in real time while you're watching TV shows. 
Uber will use Kafka to gather taxi, user, and trip data in real time, and they will use it to compute and forecast demand. And therefore, thanks to this information, they can compute the infamous search pricing in real time to know how much to charge you for a, a, a ride in case there is a lot of high demand. And then LinkedIn will use Kafka to prevent spam, collect user interactions to make better connection recommendations in real time. So in all of this, remember that Kafka is here only as a transportation mechanism. People still, write to still need to write their applications and so on, but Kafka is the big giant pipe in the middle that allows your data to flow from your source systems to your target systems in real time. So I hope you're excited to learn Kafka. I'm definitely excited to teach you Kafka in more details. So I will see you in the next lecture.